Hello everyone. In this video we're going to do a very quick introduction to what's called the lymphatic system. Now this video is designed for those studying the biology IGCSE. And there's a topic within the IGCC called uh, transport in animals. It forms part of the body of work about the circulatory system. Now, when you think about the circulatory system, you think about arteries, veins and capillaries. But there is another type of circulatory vessel, and it's the lymphatic vessel. So we think uh, about these kind of this network of tubes, if you like, of arteries, veins, and capillaries running around the body. But I've just got a an image on the screen here. I, I figured I'd just uh, use a free distributed one as opposed to drawing this out because it's quite technical. And you can see these green branches running up and down the length of the body. These are these lymphatic vessels that form their own uh, network. So what we're going to do is just explain essentially what this lymphatic system is used for. Now primarily it is a drainage system that helps your body get rid of excess circulating fluid and waste products. And it also contains white blood cells. And as we know, white blood cells are involved in fighting infection and disease. So I'm just going to make a note of those two really key uh, reasons why we have the lymphatic system. So number one is to drain excess circulating fluid and the second reason which I will expand on is to help fight infection and disease. So the reasons why we have this lymphatic uh, system so let's just expand on that. When I said waste products, essentially what I'm referring to is cell debris, bacteria, and also actually proteins. So we've got this network of lymph vessels. These are tiny channels that run through the body and carry what's called lymph fluid. So if we just highlight the blue here, you can see on the diagram, we're labelling these lymph vessels and they're going to carry this lymph fluid. Now this fluid is essentially formed when the excess fluid drains from the body. If we just look at this image here, the one of the blood capillary and the lymphatic vessel, what you find is that plasma the liquid component of the blood actually leaks out of the blood capillary and helps to form this interstitial fluid, or we know this as tissue fluid. Now, much of that drains back into the uh, capillary circulation on the venous end, but some of that excess fluid has to drain somewhere. It, we can't just have that in that interstitial fluid, otherwise we'd get swelling, so we'd get what's called edema. So we have to drain some of that away, and that's where this lymphatic vessel comes in. So as you can see from this arrow just here that I've just highlighted, some of that uh, plasma that essentially leaked out to help form the interstitial or tissue fluid drains back into this lymphatic vessel. So when we've got an excess bit of fluid, that's what uh, ultimately is going to happen. And when we do get that passing into the lymphatic vessel, that's when we refer to it as lymph fluid. Now you'll notice if you look where I've put just some of these uh, red circles on the body. You can see almost like little swellings or enlargements, little green circles. They're called lymph nodes. Now these are small glands connected by lymph vessels that are found throughout the body, but they're especially found in the neck, the armpits, the groin and the abdomen. Now they contain white blood cells called lymphocytes, which help fight infection and diseases such as cancer. So we'll just make a little note of that here. So you can see at the bottom of this diagram, just where I've got an asterisk here, we've got a, an enlarged lymph node, and it refers to the, this uh, idea of lymphocytes. And it's got macrophages there, which are just large types of phagocytic white blood cells. So they're found in, so these lymph nodes, small glands, I'll make a note here. These are small glands, and they are found predominantly 
in armpits, neck, groin, and also abdomen as well. And they contain white blood cells. That's what these are here. So let's make a little note of that. These are white blood cells. And ultimately, it's going to be those that help fight infection and disease. Now, you may have seen uh, in a previous video that I've done on lymphocytes and types of white blood cells, there's uh, actually two big types that you talk about in the IGCC, T and B lymphocytes. The T actually stands for thymus gland. Now, the thymus gland, which I'll just highlight on this picture because it's also showing us at the top here. The thymus gland is actually uh, what's called lymphoid tissue. In fact, not just the thy thymus gland, but the tonsillar tissue. So the tonsils that we know, the spleen, I'll just circle on the diagram there. All of those are actually lymphoid tissue. And they all produce these lymphocytes. Now, as I was saying, the T lymphocytes are white blood cells that actually are produced in the bone marrow, but they mature within the thymus gland. So that's just a little side note, but that's what the T lymphocyte ultimately stands for there. Now, one interesting fact is that the lymphatic drainage of the head, the limbs, and the body cavity walls follows an external route. And conversely, the lymphatic drainage of the thorax, the abdomen, and pelvic cavities actually follows an internal route back towards the heart. Now, eventually, the lymph vessels empty into what's called lymphatic ducts, and they drain into one of two subclavian veins near their junction with the internal jugular veins. What we ultimately have there is a system by which this fluid, this excess circulating fluid, can eventually go back within the main circulatory system. So there you have just a very quick snapshot of the lymphatic system designed for IGCC students, just covering ultimately key definitions of lymph fluid, lymph vessels, and talk about what these small glands called lymph nodes are. Just said a little bit about the lymphatic drainage of different parts of the body, and just explain what these lymphatics, lymphatic ducts rather do, draining or helping drain into one of the two subclavian veins in the neck, which allow ultimately a return of this fluid into the main circulatory system. Okay, hope that helps.